years, there's been a lot of talk among scientists regarding the bee population. Some are worried that their numbers are going down and that could have a big impact around the world. But what's been increasing are the number of people becoming beekeepers. News 8's Brian Spiros joins us now live this morning from uh, Red Bee in Weston. Good morning, Brian. Oh my gosh, you've got the, you're fully decked out. <laughs> Good morning, Jim and Allie. Yeah, you know, bees are extremely important to the world. I have my bee suit on here because we're opening one of the hives. And I want to introduce you to Marina Marchese. She is a beekeeper. She's an author, basically the owner of the Red Bee brand. Now, as you're opening this very delicately, you know, one of the things that we're, we've just talked about in the intro is that there's so much talk about the bee population dwindling. So what is the situation exactly? Well, bees are disappearing um, partly because of different environmental problems and something called the varroa mite. And um, we have a lot of interest in beekeeping right now because I think people really want to learn and help the honeybees. Now, we have a lot of things in this world because of honeybees. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have a lot of things. Let's talk about some of them. Well, this morning, if you're watching us and you're having your morning coffee and a glass of orange juice, you should thank a honeybee. So basically the coffee, chocolate as well. Chocolate is a huge thing. Fruits, vegetables, nuts. There's so many things that they basically are responsible for that we would not have if it wasn't for them. Breakfast granola bars, blueberries, avocados, melons, squash. Um, honeybees really pollinate a lot of our food. And um, if you garden or shop at the farmer's market, it's because the bees are bringing us this delicious food. Very important. This is the hive here. Explain basically what is going on inside here. Well, this is a fairly new colony, and um, as we inspect, we can look at the progress of how the colony is moving along. This year has been really, really beautiful. The bees have been working really hard and building up quite strongly, but you can see this is beautiful white beeswax. They're building up the little cells and they're quite docile, which is nice. They're very docile, not bothering us at all. What do you then do with all of the honey and the wax? Well, honey, we actually sell it and we enjoy it ourselves. And the beeswax we harvest um, and we make candles and we make salves, which are delicious and beautiful. So a lot of different stuff. Now, finally, obviously, if you have honeybees in your yard, you don't want to kill them. You don't want to spray anything. What are some things that people can have in their yard that would actually help the honeybees? Well, we have a patch of clover in our yard because bees really look towards clover and dandelion as sources of nectar and pollen. But, you know, there's many different things. We let a lot of our herbs go to flower because the bees enjoy that and um, there's different sunflowers that they will enjoy there's milkweed that we plant and a whole bunch of different edibles that they pollinate like i said melons and um, we have peppers and um, squashes and they love that so a lot of different things, obviously. We need to be very thankful for the honeybee. They certainly do a lot for us. So Marina, thank you so much for showing all of this this morning. I'm very impressed with how docile they are. And the next time, the next time someone has honey, they're going to think of it differently. That is the very latest. We are reporting live this morning from Weston, Brian Spiros and some bees, News 8.